The Ukrainians introduce an A-powered drone mothership for deep strikes behind the front lines, while their agents kill another Russian war criminal also far behind the front lines. But we'll talk about this as well as about anything else that has happened in this situation report about the war in Ukraine. The Ukrainians have struck the avant-garde factory in St. Petersburg. Explosions were audible and a fire was visible. It is producing radar systems for the S-400 and the Tor air defense systems. The Dubna machine factory in Moscow was also hit. It produces cruise missiles. On the front line, we have changes in Sumy. The Russians have conquered Konstantinivka and the town of Volodymyrivka which is directly east of it. This was confirmed by the Ukrainian analyst Konstantin Mashovets, and thus we assume that he is correct and the two towns are actually taken by the Russians. We switch over to the area of Kharkiv and I have nothing to report here, no changes along the front line. So we go to the eastern front and here we have the Russians having advanced in the west of Malakivka. Yep. And the Russians have been reported at this point here. On the map, this is directly of Novo Mikhailivka. So the Russians have reached this point here. Probably all of this is now to be considered in the contested area in the gray zone. Uh, in the Borova reach, uh, direction, which is the same here, the Russians are trying out new assault tactics according to Ukrainian officers and um, to uh, help with their innovation but so far this was not really successful. Further south the Russians have secured the town of Lipove. Uh, this is confirmed by the Ukrainians so the Ukrainians confirm that Lipove is now occupied by the Russians. South of the Siversky Donetsk I have nothing to report until we reach the Toretsk area. Here we have the the Russians on the uh, quite a, a piece north of Dilivka. We have a geolocation here at this point. So Dilivka is here and here is another town named Dilivka or it's probably the same. But we have the Russians reaching this point here. Um, this does not mean that this is suddenly all contested area. Um, this just means that a Russian soldier has reached to that point. We also have further geolocations where the Russians are on the other side of the railroad line inside of the town at uh, this point here. And we have the Russians north of Drushba, which is here. The Here the Russians have attacked a, a Russian soldier was spotted uh, throwing explosives on a Ukrainian position, which is directly next to it. And in another video, a Ukrainian soldier is being attacked inside of Drushba and later capitulates, confirming that at least at the time of recording, there was still Ukrainian presence in Drushba. We do see that in the Turetsk region that the Ukrainians hold out in position at times even surrounded for quite a long time, actually for months. So Drushba still does not seem to be fully uh, secured by the Russians, neither is Turetsk at this point right now. Uh, in the north of Toretsk, though, we have a fresh geolocation as well. Here, the Russians have reached, have been seen at this point on the map. This is more or less at this point here. That's it from the Toretsk region. In Pokrovsk, we have only one change, and that's in Lusivka. Here, the Russians have been spotted in the northern part of the town again. We see them here on the eastern side of it, which is marked as being liberated by the Ukrainians on the deep state map, indicating that uh, probably at least parts of the northern, uh, at least uh, parts of that area are now to be considered uh, contested. That's it from the Pokrovsk region. We go in the Novopavlivka area here. Uh, here we have the Russians advancing at Troitske and they took Troitske, the town of Troitske here. We have a geolocation of this as well, where the Russians are in the western part and have now secured control over the town of Troitske. The Russians have also reached the town of Oleksivka. Again, they were there recently and in this time, this time the geolocations show Ukrainian striking houses. So at least 
uh, in between. The, the Russians were able to enter houses. This again does not mean they've secured it. That does not mean they have consolidated control over the eastern part of Oleksivka. But this time they managed to enter the town, they managed to disembark and they managed to get into houses there, even though they were attacked. The final front line obviously is not known as of yet. Then we have a 10 day old video though that shows us the position in Bahatir. And here the Ukrainians were clearing houses in the south of Bahatir. As we can see here, more or less on the deep state map, which now again shows the northern part of Bahatir fully under Ukrainian control. And that seems to be true because the geolocations we had of the Russians are older than this video from the, the clearing of Bahatir, indicating that Bahatir is contested, but the northern part is likely under full Ukrainian control. The Russians are trying to bypass it though, west of the town. The Russians have reached this point point here. We see that already on the deep state map that according to the deep state map this is fully con uh, consolidated and in the fresh geolocation we see the Russian soldiers here. So they've cut off Bahatir from the west south of the Vovcha, uh, Vovcha river. The Ukrainians can likely still be supplied over Oleksivka but here now the Russians have entered too the so this situation is getting more difficult for the Ukrainians. To the west in the Velika Novosilka area we have the Russians advancing south of Selenepole. We now have them in the town of Novopil that we have geolocated here at this point so the Russians have entered now at this point the town of Novopil. That's it with the territorial changes that I can see. We have from the Saporizhia region a Ukrainian officer saying that the Russians are using more drones now and strike 20 to 30 kilometers behind the front lines with those drones. So the area here is heating up as well and better and more Russian drones are appearing as well. Overall, the situation hasn't really changed. The Russians are probably already in the process of their summer offensive and the focus of that clearly is towards the towns of Konstantinivka and Pokrovsk. But as of now, any big successes apart from their tactical breakthrough roughly four weeks ago in this area here are uh, not happening. The Russians will likely try to use the high ground here to come close to Konstantinivka and then force a turning maneuver, uh, achieve a turning maneuver against the Ukrainians and forth a withdrawal from this area towards the north. This would net them 200 square kilometers and with the capture of Konstantinivka they would obviously allow um, force a Ukrainian withdrawal from Chasiv Yar as well which would then settle the Russians here on the high ground that is rolling north and protecting Slovyansk, Kramatorsk and Rushkivka from the east. Um, this seems to be the operational goal apart from obviously flanking uh, Pokrovsk and achieving a turning maneuver there as well but um, we'll have to see how it continues in this regard. I made a video about this on my German channel which is automatically synchronized in case you bother listening to uh, an AI voice of um, my video. Then we have a report from, um, from sabotage activity. The, uh, the, this Russian soldier, a major of the Air Force, was killed uh, by a bomb in southern Russia. He was, according to reports, the commanding officer in the bombing of Mariupol, um, probably with the Russian Tupolev 22 bombers that were used there. The Ukrainians accuse him of being responsible for 8,000 civilians being killed there. And he was now killed in uh, with a bomb in southern Russia. He was on going on a date with another homosexual like him, where uh, the whom he met through a dating app, and the other guy carried the bomb. Uh, the other guy also died in this attack and this makes it likely that he didn't even know he was carrying a bomb. The, according to Russian reports, they did not find bomb making equipment in his apartment. So somehow the Ukrainians must have uh, brought, uh, managed to, to place a bomb in his belongings, killing the two of them then later. Then we have reports about explosions in a naval base in Vladivostok. That's, by the way, on the Pacific coast. So fully here in the east, in Vladivostok, a naval base, there have been explosions. According to the reports, a guard's house and a and barracks for officers 
were struck. Um, this is obviously speaking for personal on the ground, not for uh, distance weapons, because if the Ukrainians want to just kill personnel, they sure have enough personnel closer to kill. They wouldn't have to use a special long-range drone to reach Vladivostok from Ukraine itself. So obviously either pro-Ukrainian or actual, U actual Ukrainian operators are on the Pacific coast operating close to and in Vladivostok. Ukraine has also taken um, responsibility, but so far I have not seen any uh, details of how officially the attack has happened. In troop generations, we have news, uh, good news for the Russians. DJI, according to the Ukrainian president, has cut the supplies of its equipment, the Chinese basically, to Western and Ukrainian purchasers, um, uh, customers, but the Russians still receive anything they want and, according to reports, have actually received increased sales of drones, indicating that the Chinese are now more um, focusing on supplying the Russians than the rest of the world. In troop generation on Ukraine, we have something interesting. The Ukrainians have uh, published that they first used their, a long-range drone for autonomous uh, strikes. It works with LiDAR and other systems, and it can either fly 100 kilometers and return back to its home base, or it can go on one-way runs for 300 kilometers. It carries two um, FPV-type drones on its on itself and all of it is fully done autonomous so those drones when launched are, are looking for their targets without manual input uh, this allows the drone to operate without gps without any connection to ground control so this is the first fully official uh, drone that is still actively searching for targets simply with AI. Obviously, this might lead to some mistakes um, depending on the software at some point, but it was something that was to be expected for quite some time. And now we have the Ukrainians officially confirming that they're using that they used it, so it was already tested. The producer says he currently has a capacity of producing 50 motherships and 400 of the attack drones a month, depending on contracts from the government, this could obviously be increased. Then we have OPEC increasing its oil uh, production rates by another 400, I think, 11,000 barrels a day. Um, this was already done in May and June, for May and June. Now it's going to happen in July as well. But uh, while this should uh, drop the oil price to a certain degree, um, this uh, still, there's no indication that it was against the will of the Russians that this has happened. And as we can see here with the graphics from the BBC, BBC the Russians have received a lot of money in internet, uh, much more money from other countries during the time of the full-scale invasion than Ukraine has received in international aid. In fact, even from NATO countries, the NATO countries have paid more for Russian oil and gas to um, in regards to what they sent to Ukraine in international aid from EU and from sanctioning states. All of it is the same in this regard. And finally, we have an image from Ukraine where we see how prevalent now the fiber optic drones are this is a field and all of these are cables from fiber optic drones that have been used there where the cables are now lying on the ground but that's already it from me for today for today's situation report if you liked it please give it a thumbs up it helps with the algorithm if you knew how i would like to invite you to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon and um, leave a comment if you have something to add this channel is only possible because of the support of viewers like you if you'd like to support the channel you can do so by the means in the description but that's it from me for now thank you for watching and I'll be back.